What's up, y'all? It is your host, Kimmy Coco, and we are here at your favorite podcast, Connecting the Dots. What's up, everybody? We got a lot to get into. We are here live. You ain't going to see it live, but when you do see it, you'll know that you were witnessing us talk during quote unquote All Star Weekend in Atlanta. And we have some special guests here. Of course, co host Dom is here, Trill Manga from So Mississippi Candles, among other things. And I don't know if he wants to talk because he's eating right now in front of everyone. But if you want to introduce yourself and your podcast, just talk. They can hear you. Oh, hello, Steve from the No Buffer Podcast. Steve from the No Buffer Podcast is here too. So if you hear the voice chiming in between the bites, that's who that is. And of course, the producer Jay Black. What up, what up, what up? What's going on? So, all right. We are here, NBA All-Star Weekend, which is really NBA All-Star Day because only one day is what they're having official NBA events. So why people came here, I don't know. Because guess what? They aren't, they aren't even having uh, attendees at this game. So people just came to Atlanta, crowding up the place, crowding up the clubs. And we really appreciate you stimulating our economy, but is it worth it jeopardizing and risking your health? I don't think people think that COVID is a thing anymore, but it absolutely is. Yeah. Um, the numbers have gone down dramatically compared to January and December, of course, because in January and December, it was like out of this world because everybody was going from house to house for Christmas and Thanksgiving and this and that. So the numbers were like, so now they're down. So all the government officials that are saying that it's down, it's down compared to last month. Texas, Mississippi. Alabama. <laughs> Wide open. So as you all know, this thing has been politicized since day one. We've been talking about it. Go, go watch some of our old podcast episodes. You can go back to the first week we heard about COVID. And we had a great episode. We had a guest that week. I think it was Char Bates. Go that check that. Week, and that was the week before. Because what was it? The 15th? That was the week before it the shut 15th down. The 15th is when shit shut yeah. down. So, you know, you can check out our perspective, how things have changed, what we know now compared to what we knew then. Um, you know, and just get some perspective. Right now, the numbers, if you look at it from March to March, right, we're at the still, we're still at the top of the, you know, the curve. They were kept saying, you know, the curve, the curve. We kept hearing about the curve, right? Mm -hmm. So now the curve, if you look at it, and the public health officials are still taking numbers. I don't know why the media stopped reporting about it, but you can still go to these public health websites and see it for yourself. The deaths are evening out, but the number of cases, we're still at the top of that curve. The curve is not. I, I think that's what a lot of people don't understand. When you talk because about people curve. don't understand yeah. stats. People don't understand math. People don't understand science. People don't understand and, a lot of and, shit. And there's a reason for that. Like, I, I me being a science-based, you know what I'm saying, a professional, I, I think I try to provide leeway. And that's why I don't mind explaining stuff to some people because, like, knowledge really is power. And it's a reason why they don't teach you certain stuff or they don't make it important. It's a reason why the news stop covering it. You know, it, it's... It, 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 you have to, if you want to learn and you want to become more knowledgeable and better at anything, a lot of it comes with teaching yourself stuff. So that's one thing I, I and there's nothing wrong with asking for help or getting information from different places, but um, no matter what, you're going to have to be diligent enough to teach yourself and to look into things for yourself so everything doesn't scare you or everything doesn't, you know, frazzle you. Um, because if that was the case, like I always tell people, people dying of heart attacks and worry every day. So. And in the life we live, is always going to be something to worry about. So we have to be smart enough to, you know. When I hear the officials talk about this mm -hmm. and they compare. So what you have to think about, even with the vaccine, right, is risk. Yeah. Is your risk of getting COVID or your risk of getting sick from COVID and your risk from getting sick from the vaccine? Like, you have to weigh out your risk. Yeah, I'm about to get on one of your people that you love. But I, I was looking at a clip of Wendy Williams, Ugh. and she was saying how she wasn't taking the vaccine. And not to be shady, but like I'm like Wendy, out of all the stuff you did in your life, you gonna let a vaccine scare you? I'm um, saying, <laughs> I'm okay. You know I love Wendy, but let me tell you something. She disappointed me not because 
you know, everybody's entitled to their opinion, and this is a truly personal choice, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. To get a vaccine or not to get a vaccine is up to you, your family, Definitely. your risk, mm-hmm. you know, how many people do you come in contact with over the, you know, you right. got to think about all of that. Yeah. But she, <laughs> so not the Botox, nope. not the implants, not the, the, the liposuction, not 15 people in opening up your body to cut it and tighten it up. Right. It's the vaccine that you were, that, that scared you. And None of that other stuff is scaring you. And that's what stood out to me so much because I feel like in, in general, because like even with, with germaphobes and different stuff like that, as, as a scientist, I'm like, you know, in my head, I'm like, if you knew how many germs you came into contact with Period. on a daily basis. On a daily like, basis. You know and they think that, and that was one of the conspiracies that I think should have been debunked a long time ago, and mm-hmm. I guess it kind of was, but yeah. um, the masks. Mm-hmm. And they were saying, if you keep your mask on too long, you're compromising your immune system, and it's not going <laughs> to work anymore because you ca- No. It, every day, every day, even if you're by yourself, you're coming to eat the food, the dirt, the grime, the dust. There's right. something in everything that's going to. Mm-hmm. I think that's been a problem, though, that. Even when it first came out, it just been so much miscommunication. Yeah, absolutely. You pulling people each and every way, and people just like fuck it, like they like fuck it, and they doing whatever. And I think that's the problem. Like you, you hear one side telling you this, you hear another side telling you this, and it's like you don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. And well, people, you and like you say, people not doing their own research. I mean, of course that's the right thing here. to do, but you people not doing it. Yeah. So, there are some people. What makes me nervous is there are some people with huge platforms mm-hmm. like her. Yeah. That are telling you, you know, I don't trust it. I don't do this. I don't do that. When you have every doctor, every researcher, I'm sure Kizzy from um, Pfizer or, you know, does she work for Pfizer? That Kizzy PhD woman that, yeah, she helped I'm, develop the vaccine. And she works for. I'm, about to say, I'm not for sure if she works for them or, or not. Well, she's a scientist. She's and I'm sure educated. she'd love to sit down on your show, on your couch and explain to people. For sure. Or somebody. You have mm-hmm. access to anybody in the world that would love to sit on your platform to explain it to you. So your uh, uneducated opinion yeah. was unnecessary. Yeah. I mean, he did ask her, and she mm-hmm. gave her an honest opinion. And like I said, it's personal. So yeah. I'm not going to dog her out for doing that. Mm-hmm. But it's dangerous because you're so influential. Yeah. Just like a lot of rappers. Mm-hmm. And you know, I'm a hip-hop head all day. <laughs> But the thing about it for me was I was getting mad because I'm like, oh, I see how y'all signed a bunch of bad contracts back in the day because you right. don't read shit. I, I you know was, damn well. You you know damn well. The ones that were saying, like, don't wear a mask and it's fake and yeah. it's not that serious. Like, the survival rate. And I'm like, yeah, yeah the survival rate, the number was high, right? Mm-hmm. Survival rate. Yeah. So I think they said the survival rate was – uh. 90 percent or it was the high it's pretty high yeah the survival rate mm-hmm. so say it is 90 percent, right there are 350 million people in this country so what's 10 percent of that it's a lot of people that's still 3.5 so you're willing to risk mm-hmm. 3.5 million lives because you because the survival rate and the survival rate is great right mm-hmm. but what about the long-term effects what about the people for example that one college basketball player that collapsed in the middle of a basketball game because he had COVID, he got over it, Mm -hmm. but it had damaged his heart. Yeah. And so, you know, it's a lot of shit. I think it was a young lady in WNBA who it ended her career because it damaged her. I I posted that. You guys check out, sometimes we talk about stuff that um, we post. So it's kind of like a interactive podcast, right? Because I post news stories on the, on the, um, podcast page ctd underscore atl and i usually don't post my opinion i just post what the facts are or what the alleged facts are based on Mm -hmm. the publication and then we come and talk about it and try to like help people understand you know what i'm saying so make sure you follow us chime in um i can read some of the comments sometimes you know just to keep it spicy but um yeah i don't know I just, it, when you have a really huge platform like that, you got to be careful. Her name was Asia Durr. She played for the Liberty. She did. And then yeah. she couldn't play anymore because it damaged her. She still can't run. She oh, still doesn't. Goodness. She, she, so, people. I, I know her from the She's from here. Yeah. She had COVID. And she got over it. She, you know, but it still damaged her lungs to the point where she can't run no more. She can't really walk at all. Like, she can walk. Her. 
Yeah, yeah, but that's the thing. That happened to a lot of people. They're called COVID long haulers. Mm -hmm. Google that. And you'll see a bunch. Like, yeah, they survived. They didn't yeah. die. Mm -hmm. But their quality of life is changed for, we don't know how long, because the research, we're still in the middle of this. Like, it's still new. And that's something people don't understand either. I, I see a lot of opinions and different things like that. Like, I feel like we look back on history, and we have we can we can look back and see what happened. But people don't don't realize that science develops in real time. Like you in know, real it's, time. It's, it's, it's experiments. You're doing things to try to figure out what's going on, best practices. So while we're in COVID, of course we'll be able to look back. You know, a year later and be like, well, we should have did this, this, and this. But like once again, it's new variants developing is you know what i'm saying we're trying to see we're running against time right and, and the so, covid the covid and and that's what people don't understand is the virus is mutating faster than we are stopping it because people don't want to people won't consistently like you'll wear a mask for a little while and then people are like so the variants are mutating faster than we are able to stop it the vaccine the mask and that's why when Biden first got elected, he said, hey, let's wear masks consistently for 100 days. We'll get the numbers down, and then we'll talk about. But no, the Republicans, and I'm not, look, when I say this, I'm not politicizing it, me. Mm -hmm. They're politicizing it. Yeah. So Because coincidentally, all the ones that are anti-mask or, you know, anti-mask uh, mandates happen to be Republican. That's the irony, you know, of the situation. <laughs> But, you know, it, once again, I, I think we have to be honest that, like, sadly, it is a political situation now, but we still have to um, find a way to, like, once again, defeat this because, like, I always tell people COVID is kicking our ass right now. Um, it's winning. Yeah, and, and we have to be realistic. Um, I, I always said you can only holler fake news is fake for so long until it gets real on you, and I feel like that's what's happening to a, a lot of people. Um, in more ways than once. So uh, I'm just really hoping that we can, you know, get everybody that wants to be vaccinated, vaccinated, and then really just start to, you know, move to the next level. of. of the major thing I hear people say is they don't know about it. They developed it too fast. It usually takes mm -hmm. 10 to 12 years to develop a vaccine or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's true, and I understand that. But also understand that part of that process is paperwork. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of red tape that they cut because of this, of this emergency situation. The technology for the vaccine had already been developed. Mm -hmm. They just didn't have a, a reason to use it yet. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see, you know. As the world turns. As the world turns, we'll find out what we can find out when we can find it out. But like you said, if you want to get it, get it. If you don't, don't. But don't be out here lying or spreading fake information because you're too lazy to look I it up am, yourself. I'm definitely pro-vaccine, but, you know, like once again, I'm not getting into judging anybody, you know. Just give me my six feet and we good. Um, this is the seventh. Tomorrow's the eighth. There's a trial that's starting this week that you'll want to pay attention to. The man that murdered George Floyd, Derek Chauvin. Yeah. His trial starts tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So keep up with that. We'll talk about that. And as the um. As the trial goes on, we'll keep up with that. Um, they have boarded up some windows and they have blocked off some streets ahead of the protest. So, I mean, ahead of the <laughs> ahead of the <laughs> trial. Yeah. <coughs> In anticipation of there being a protest. Speaking of protest. Georgia, we done pissed the people off. The Republicans are uh, put, they passed House Bill 531. So now it's going to go to the Georgia Senate. And Brian Kemp, once it comes across his desk, I'm sure he'll be more than happy to sign it. <laughs> Do you guys know about HB 531? No. We talked about it before on a previous episode, so you should. It is. It's so many numbers. You know, it's a lot of bills going on right now. A lot so of bills, but I, all I, of them I, are I, to I, stop voters. I have to keep up with the numbers, and that's what I'm about to say. Overall, it's, it's about voter suppression, and it's really ironic how there is such a push to change voting just because of the outcome of the last election. 
So once again, I just like to tell people, pay attention. I know, you know, sometimes we tune out and we all got our own problems, but we have to pay attention to these local and state politics because they really affect our everyday lives. And I, uh, I, I'm just trying to urge people to pay attention because it's always an issue of somebody trying to make it harder for you to vote. People should be trying to make it easier for you to vote. They so, should. So, so definitely uh, take note of when, where, and why these people are trying to stop you from being able to vote. Um, because I say it, it's getting real out here. It's been real. Um, and, I, and I want the people that say, ooh, I don't, you know, like politics that much or, you know, this doesn't concern me to realize that you're the people that they're praying on because they want you to be misinformed. They want you to not know what's going on. They want you to... They're, the government yeah. is banking on you being ignorant. Yeah. And, and, and sadly, we do have a lot of ignorant people out here. And we're all ignorant in, in some situations, you know. It, it's plenty of things I don't know. But... The difference is, like, I'm not afraid to ask for help or to, you know, get Absolutely not. We're all here. We need to help each other understand, like, I'm very sarcastic. Mm -hmm. That's just how I am. It's that jersey in you. I guess. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm probably not the best person to ask stuff to, but I'll find out if you really I, just you, need to know. You're, you're. You you're jazzy, but I feel like you're also. It's coming very, from a good place. Yeah, I, I feel like you you might say something smart, but after you say something smart, you're still gonna teach like that. You person get what me. They wanna know. You know yeah. what I mean? Like people are like, uh, you shouldn't do that if you really want people to learn. I'm like, I'm not no teacher. Yeah. <laughs> so the way I deliver it, that's just in my delivery. You yeah. know what I mean? If you get it, you know. Um, back to HB five three one. It will restrict early voting hours from nine to five. Which, I don't know about you, but that's usually people's working hours. I'm about to say, once again, what you're going to do for the people that work, you know, the people that, you know. It'll ban early voting on Sundays. Again, if you have a job, how you going to early vote? Ban government from mailing absentee ballot applications. Limit ballot drop box locations to only early voting locations. And you know that those are few and far between depending on where you live, especially in the rural area, sometimes you only have one location. Um, limit box drop-off hours, okay. Close ballot drop boxes the day before the election. I'm, I'm kind of down with that. Why is that? Because people, like, I voted, okay, in the last election was November, right? I voted in September. Yeah. Like, I dropped my thing off in the box in September. Uh-huh. And so I had to wait four months. Yeah. <laughs> In the whole scheme of things. I'm not mad at that one. <laughs> um, restrict mobile voting. So people that are handicapped, mm -hmm. you can drive up and they have a thing and you put your stuff in and, you know. And this kind of one that kind of like, to me, it was kind of like kicking people while they down. It, it's kind of like, really? Like, well, how? Well, you can't, you can't right? With yeah. medical, you, yeah. they still but got those and that's a, the that, people and that, that was my thing with it. it. Like, I, I do agree that they making it harder, mm -hmm. but it's like, these are the rules for everybody. It ain't just for Democrats. Like the playing field, like even like the way they making it easier, that's benefiting them too. So I don't see why, why they will be against it. But them having this shit in place, like mm -hmm. the people, the Republican, they still have to, you know, carve out the time and they schedule. They still have to go around these loopholes too. They still making it harder on themselves. So it's just like. But what I, happened I, is, but the the history shows yeah, that's what that Democrats history. early vote. But okay. But that's cool. Okay, so again, we either have to have our people in place, or should we just gonna have to make that sacrifice and stand in them lines? Like, if we really want to change, we can't find excuses. If if we gotta stand in line for two, three days, we need to put some. We gonna figure out a way. Shit, have groups of people like Ben. You stand in line for this long, and you know, run shifts. Like you just you just gotta figure it out. Like instead, and of that's what we've been. That's what we used to have to do. But the thing is, this day and age, you should be trying to make it easier for nah, people. No, I agree with that. Yeah. I agree with that. But I'm saying, like, obviously, you know, we we they came we came out and voted. And obviously it, we know this is still happening. So if we we still have to find a way. We can't just sit back and complain. We have to find a way. So speaking of your suggestion of what we do, it's gonna outlaw line warming by volunteers. 
So with like you know, that, snacks, you want me to that. bring you some water? You've been out here for four hours. It's eighty degrees. You want? We can't give so, you no water. So, but okay, but again, so we could bring a lock, a bunch box. A that's chair. what I'm saying. You know this information. Prepare now. You just got to prepare for the, you know, for what you got to do. And if you do decide you want to vote by mail, you would have to mail a copy of your driver's license twice. You have to mail one when you request your absentee ballot, and you have to mail one when you vote. If you got a valid driver's license, I mean, I know it's an extra step, but. It's just you feel me, like I, I, I think sometimes we sleep on like how disenfranchised some groups are, and like how hard it is to get ID for some people. How yeah, but that's the to, thing. That to, is the thing right and, there. But and, and those are the groups that they are targeting with laws like this. So I think we have to be mindful of, you know, yes, everybody's gonna have to do these things, and yes, everybody's gonna be held to the same standard. So but the voter IDs, right? Who has, who doesn't have voter ID, right? This is according to the Brennan Center. I guess they research stuff like this. 25% of black people don't have a photo ID. 8% of white people don't have a photo ID. Whose fault is that? Right. That's, you're not, like, you feel me? And then my thing too is, um, so we voting on it, this bill is out right, right now, right? Mm -hmm. And the Senate and the House is voting on that, right? The House already voted for it. They're and, going to the Georgia Senate. And the Senate. people that's yeah. basically making this decision are people that we vote in, correct? Absolutely. So and that's we can what vote I'm saying. Out. Like, vote them that's out. what I'm saying. Like, so if it has, if it takes one election for us to have to follow these rules to get what we want, like we just have to do that. Mm -hmm. Like, we so called just did it with this last election. So I don't even understand. I don't understand why we still having these problems. But because the last election, the we full, we turned school. Georgia blue. With the fed, with the government, with the with the country. Okay. The state. It's still a real state. Right. Okay. The state still has mm -hmm. more Republican representation than Democratic representation. Right. Now, when it comes to stuff like this bill that just passed and us getting our COVID relief bill, because Georgia elected John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock, mm -hmm. that made it 50-50. So now there's 50 Republicans and 50 Democrats. Before that, there was a Republican control. control. Yeah. Now, I think we have control. The Democrats have control by one or by two people, right? Well, technically, technically we have control because of the We have a majority. Mm -hmm. So now, whenever they vote on a Republican thing like that, but still the local shit. So that's what I'm saying. The local if shit. It's really going to take, if, if this is a big problem to us, it's really gonna take one one election we gotta sacrifice to do all this bullshit that they want. And then once we get our people in, we or whoever you voting for, whatever, you, I ain't gonna even say our people because I can't really say I, but whoever you voting for, you get them to change the law to what you want. But you just have to make that one sacrifice like, Damn, I'm gonna have to stay in these damn lines longer. We're gonna have to fit we gotta figure it out. Like yeah. you can't just sit here and be like, oh, they doing this. And, and that's another thing. I'm glad you brought that up because I want people to realize that in politics, um, very few things are instant. Most things are a process. So I, I think all of us can remember, you know, eight, you know what I'm saying, ten years ago here in Georgia where like it, it was un unimaginable for this to be a, a blue state now. You, you know, in the whole scheme of things, but if you look at the process that's been going on here in Georgia, it's not as far fetched to see what's happening going on now because you know this work that you the, the victory that you see now, the work on those things started way, way, way back, and so I feel like we have to view politics as an ongoing process instead of it's okay, an ongoing process. Let's everybody vote today and then forget about everything that's going on like no you should constantly be engaged in politics you should constantly know what's going on you should constantly be uh, holding your officials accountable and that's why so many of these officials do think they're untouchable because there hasn't been anybody vetting them and holding them accountable for the things they ran on and the promises that they made to people so we just got to wake up and, and really really once again pay attention and hold the people accountable because we really do pay these people salaries like literally um there was a list and this is one of the things that we spoke about y'all you probably remember you were we were talking about this um and how, it made me really question how long have they been pushing like how long have you been working on this bill well ever since probably ever since uh kelly loffler and david purdue and lost. so where's so Ooh, and kelly loffler been so quiet That's so is this other. money this money that's being donated to help this bill, that's going towards marketing of it? Or what is that money going towards? Like, where's all this money going towards? 
So, I, like I, when when companies are, because I know yeah. like with, when it, with politics is helping with their marketing and, and you know and all that, getting them to different spots. So yeah. when it comes to these bills, where does this money? What's the significance of this money? So in politics, we have what we I always tell people, the lobbyists. Like yeah, so like how social media you have influencers, people that try to get you to buy stuff, try to get you to. It could be anything from flat tummy tea to you know what I'm saying whatever they're selling. Politics got the same thing, and as Kim said, they're called lobbyists. And so these big corporations know like money is a good way to convince people to fight for you. And so these corporations that you were seeing, Coca-Cola, who has been, you know, all Black Lives Matter and blah, 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 uh, and all these other huge companies, they're saying Black Lives Matter on one end, Mm -hmm. but then on the back end, they're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars, sometimes millions, depending on, you know what I'm saying, what the case is, to make lawmakers show favor to their wants and needs. So so this money is literally going to lobbyists and people that – uh, convince lawmakers to smile on their, you know, wants and needs, and, and that's where that money goes, literally. So when you see these big corporations, these big dollars, and say so and so has donated this amount of money since this date, it trust is something going on behind it. And another thing you have to remember, you said how long has this been going on and why or whatever. You have to remember. So when Trump lost the election, before he even lost the election, he was like, "If I lose, that's because it was rigged." So this rigged shit, mm-hmm. this it's rigged. They've been, it's a snowball. It's been building up, building up. Oh, it must be rigged because he lost Georgia. Oh, he lost Georgia because there's voter suppression. Oh, we need to recount the votes. Oh, the votes are not right. Oh, we need to recount them again. It's been going on that whole time. All that was setting us up for this. So now they can say, oh, we need you guys to do this because there was suspicion of voter, of voter fraud yeah, there was suspicion, but they investigated it. They recounted it. They had the feds get involved, and nobody found anything. So it, this it, is all based on this. Like, and, and that's the thing I want people to realize. Like, it, it isn't just Democrats on these boards. It isn't just Democrats that are, you know, overwatching elections. Like, there are Republican officials. There are Republican, you know, constituents along the whole way. So for them to holler, you know, unfair or everything is fake, it, it, it makes them have to, in the whole scheme of things, look themselves in the eyes too, because they're discounting their own their own people who have verified that yo, there's there's been no collusion, there's been no cheating, there's been you know. This no was the life. most secure election ever, mm-hmm. and yep. that's why those people that um, run those voting machines that produce voting machines are suing. Yeah. They're suing the people that are saying that the election was rigged, because that means that our machines are rigged and our machines are not rigged. And people aren't realizing. Like a lot of Fox News and a lot of these other huge entities are literally apologizing to these, you know, the, these companies that make these voting machines because they know that they can't prove that there was. They can't prove fraud. it. And so yeah. it, it's kind of like, and, and they're suing for, I'm not talking about thousand dollars. I think billion. it's like 5.3 billion or something yeah. like that. And, and so you're going to have to hold up Because they're ruining for, their business. Yeah, you're going to have to hold up for all this, this fake news talk that you're talking. If you can't prove it, pay me my money. So um, speaking of that, the article I posted on CTD um, ATL on our Instagram page, um, following surprise losses in November and January, Republican legislatures in Georgia are aggressively pushing legislation to restrict voting before the next election. The purpose of these bills is to both validate Trump's false claims of electoral fraud and to make it more difficult for Democratic-leaning constituencies, particularly communities of color, to cast their ballots in the next election. An investigation by popular information encompassing thousands of Georgia campaign finance records filed over the last three years reveals that Republican elected officials sponsoring these bills are backed by millions in corporate donations. There are a slew of bills that have been introduced in the Georgia legislature to restrict voting, but two have significant momentum. The Georgia, the one we just talked about, HB 531, the bill that would impose an array of new restrictions on voting, including limiting the use of drop boxes, ballots, all the stuff we just talked about. Um, the Georgia Senate is considering its own legislation, Senate Bill 241. The Senate legislation shares many of the provisions which the House bill does, so all the stuff we talked about, but it also eliminates no excuse mail-in voting, which has been available since 2005. Mm -hmm. Instead, mail-in voting would only be allowed in limited circumstances, such as physical disability or travel. Um, There are companies that finance 
this, these people, popular information, they've been researching this for the last three years and they found that there are companies that have paid thousands of dollars toward campaign that back these bills. So some of the companies that they listed were AT&T, they have donated to co-sponsor HB 531 and SB 241 since 2018. This has been going on for a long time to answer your question. Um, AT&T has donated $99,000 towards this. Aetna, CVS, $43,000. Delta, $41,000. Comcast, $40,000. Southern Company, $38,000. Coca-Cola, $34,000. Home Depot, $34,000. General Motors, $33,000. Publix, $29,000. I done heard that name too many damn times, Publix. <laughs> That's one too many damn times for me. I'm gonna go give me some wings after this. Uh-uh. <laughs> United Healthcare, $27,000. SunTrust, Truist, $25,000. Walmart, $23,000. Pfizer, $17,000. Allstate, $17,000. Anthem, $17,000. These are some big companies. Anheuser-Busch, $18,000. Verizon, $14,000. Walgreens, $10,000. T-Mobile, $7,000. Affleck, $7,000. Lyft, $6,000. So if we was going to boycott... We got a lot of, like, what would we be able to do? If I see a couple of people on here I use on a daily basis. Yeah. T-Mobile. Well, I feel like, of course. Verizon. We, I mean, I can't even switch companies because Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T. The, the, and, and that's what I'm trying to get people to realize. Of course, I understand boycotting, but what are we going to do? We're going to boycott everything. Like, I always tell people, like, we have to even become solid on what we're going to boycott. We ain't got to boycott everything on there. We can pick one or two of those companies, you know what I'm saying, and be like, yo, we're not, we not messing with y'all. Because if you – and this is something my father taught me, like, when you're younger. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you fight more than one person, like, you might not beat them all up, but if you mess the first one or two up – Then the other ones won't – right. focus they on one. Twice. If you just show, like, we had an opportunity even with the Gucci – like, if we was to literally, like, just to stop supporting one of these big companies, mm -hmm. it's a ripple effect. effect, And all these other companies going to get on, on board because they're going to be like, oh, a, a giant like Gucci was shut down by right. black people stop shopping, mm -hmm. you know, black people stop stopping spending their money with them. But I think they, they tried to get ahead like, of it with all this performative black no, awareness. Saying, and, and yeah, they going to the they, they yeah. do what they do because that's, that's just the, that's what that's they the do. game. Right. It's on us. Like, we have to stop. To know better. We just have to stop. Like, but what are we willing to sacrifice? Nothing. Yeah, but, but, people aren't willing to ever willing to... People are not ever willing to sacrifice anything. Even with coronavirus, it was like, I don't want to wear a mask. I don't want to social distance. Mm -hmm. Now it's, I don't want to get the vaccine. Like, what do you want to do? It's here. That seems like it. You know what I'm saying? People, <laughs> yeah, people got to stand for it. Like, even like with, with H&M. Like, I, I used to go to H&M, but ever since that monkey shit, I haven't been in there. I was in the mall the other day, and I, I wanted H &M to go. H&M was packed. No, I wanted to go in there because I know I can find yeah. some, you know, something for cheap, you know. Yeah. But I'm like, I ain't going to even do it just for the simple fact. Like, and it's just like, man, we got to be more disciplined. Like, we, them Not stores that we trying to boycott, they, they provide convenience. Yeah. So it's hard to boycott them and, stores. And, and, and I, I think this is the perfect time. I, I really want black people in our community to realize that far too often, we ask people to, to contribute to something or to take away something without giving them another suitable option. Okay, so if, if we're not going to go to Target, you know what I'm saying, Target is the only community in a lot of these people's community, are we going to give them a suitable option too? And, and, and once again, I know every situation is going to be cut and dry, but we do have to realize the sacrifices are going to have to be made if we want to eventually come out on top because this yeah. is the perfect time to start building black entities and you, you know what I'm saying and, and living here in Atlanta I realize we're spoiled because we can go outside and see regularly you know what I'm saying operating black excellence but a lot of places over, across the country they don't have that same vision so it's our job to you know what I'm saying be at the forefront of things and show people like yo this is how things are done um, so you know we just have to be mindful that you know of other people's perspective point of view and their position on things and then try to just slowly teach them the right way and give them the right options to, to actually be able to be successful in some of these things that we're asking them to do. Um, there's a book, it's called The Devil You Know. And um, it's, it's pretty new. I haven't read it yet, but the author of that book was on one of the programs that I was watching and what he was saying was, 
some of these uh, laws and some of these people that you see out here, um, they're never going to stop doing that. That's all they know. Like, for example, Texas and Florida. Mm -hmm. The Republican control of those two states is so overwhelming, it would take so many years to try to get rid of it, even though they think they came close to turning blue recently. That just goes to show how the Republicans have a stronghold on those areas. He said what would more likely make things better overall for the um, livelihood of black people is to live in a metropolitan black city like move. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, and it sounds extreme and it sounds ridiculous, but during the great migration, mm -hmm. back in the Jim Crow era, mm -hmm. millions of black people moved north because mm -hmm. it was so bad in the south. Right. They moved to Detroit, they moved to New York, they moved to LA, they moved to Ohio because of how, I tell people this all the time, I'm first generation US because my parents were born in the Confederacy. <laughs> I'm gonna start using that. <laughs> I am. I'm first generation because my parents were born in the Jim Crow era of yeah. the South, and it, I mean, and it's funny, but that's real. Like you know, what I'm saying most of us don't. We're not that far removed from that era. Most of us are one or two people, you know, from from literally slavery. Yep. So we got to keep on top of it. I will keep you guys posted. Also, just a side note, if, if you like that book, The Devil We Know, um, there is actually a Netflix special on it, and I think you would love it. Um, so, the, so, about the migration? Well, it's not about the migration. The Devil We Know on Netflix is about the laws and, like, this, this city is this huge company called DuPont, and they were, you know, like the cooking mm -hmm. company Teflon that makes all the no-stick stuff. So... Um, they had a formula, but this formula and the product they used was like literally it was horrible. Like it, it, it animals, water system, everything in the environment, um, it just killed it. And all the people in that region got cancer and just these deformities. And it shows how the laws and the um, system is geared to once again, if you have enough money. You can keep stuff quiet. You can make lawmakers vote how you want to, even if it devastates a community. Um, so it's definitely a, a good one, especially on the back. So, like, you're seeing stuff now, like Flint, Michigan, uh, the water quality in Texas and Mississippi and a lot of these places where... So Mississippi still does not have water from yeah. the... Jackson, Mississippi, the people have been without water for the last two, two weeks, two and a half weeks. Yeah. What's the name of that documentary or that movie? The Devil You Know. The Devil, oh, it's yeah, called the, the same as the book? Yeah. All right. Um... And it, once again, you know, going back to people in Jackson haven't had uh, water in two and a half weeks. And I feel like, once again, going back to a lot of times, like the laws that, like, once again, it's the greatest country in the world. America is such a great country. Oh, place. obviously, that's not true. But we keep seeing these instances where our infrastructure is failing us. And it, it's failing us because we haven't invested in it in ages. Um, the, the water system in Jackson. The, uh, the mayor is getting a lot of flack now um, just because he's the person in power to fix it, but this is an issue that has been knowingly been ignored for years, and now you have something happen like but this. But see, this is the thing, too. When people talk about Obama didn't do anything, mm -hmm. he was really hard on environmental issues because he knew that the people that lived in the areas that suffered the most were black. Mm -hmm. And you say he didn't do nothing for black people or enough for black people, but... He made those companies, he regulated those companies. Mm -hmm. You can't just dump stuff in the water. You can't just dump stuff into the air. No. And that's why they didn't like him. Mm -hmm. But I think I think when it comes to people saying stuff like that, and you see it now, people only see what you do directly for them. Because mm -hmm. a lot of that stuff you saying with Obama was indirectly, you know, cleaning the water. Like, people really, is really in tune right now because they have money on the line. They're sending yeah, them money. money. So that's why everybody's paying attention, mm -hmm. like, that's directly, they getting that instant gratification or that instant whatever. Right. Because they know they when see they, it working right exactly, away. Yeah. Exactly. And that's, I think that was one of that, that might have been one of the things with Obama. Like, and then we didn't have social media back then. It was kind of the yeah, beginning so of you all did, this. You so really you need an intermediary, uh, intermediary to tell you, yeah, how, you like we do. You able what to we do now. Thing. Like, if yeah. we were here then, we would say, oh no, did you, you know, 
yeah. Yeah. to exactly. be able to explain I, how and, that and works. You got to get on channel two to see what's going on, on, on at the protest. I can literally tune in to Kim's IG live. Exactly, exactly. And literally see in real time, probably faster than the news can deliver it to me. Exactly. Um, so that's one thing that, like, once again, we have to take note in today's society. So at the protest, um, I've, I've had the pleasure of meeting a nice man um, who told me that he doesn't think that people that don't own property should vote. He walked out of the Georgia State Capitol with yeah. a suit and a tie on, which I assume that he works there. And so for me, I'm thinking people that work there really think like this. So that's yeah. why you have to be out here mm -hmm. changing the narrative or, yeah. or putting your foot down like, oh, no, that's just not how this is going to mm -hmm. be. What do you mean if you don't own property, you should not vote? And, and, and that's why I tell people, because, like, once again, all these city council meetings, these meetings that they have at the Capitol, like, they're open to the public. Like, you can literally go there. They have time on the docket for you to get up and say whatever you But that's you what we to. need to do. And, and I applaud everybody that does that. I applaud people like Attorney Griggs and mm -hmm. Dante and yeah. all those people. And even you, whoever. Yeah. Whoever goes down there, because guess what? They do it. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. average person goes down there all the time. And, and, and the... the the issue I had, because, like, you can't go down there, but you got to realize a lot of these things. I was this why it's good to have good friends. Like, I know, like, if, if you're at work, you may not be able to go down to the courthouse, but people like Riz, people like Dante, like, they're there. They're there. But guess what? And they, you know what people do? You know what I did? What? I brought a box of donuts. People <laughs> sent pizza. People yeah. sent, like, you don't have to be there. You can still assist them in some kind of way. The community, yeah, it, it, and that's where community comes in, realizing you're like you're really not by yourself. Speaking of them, congratulations to them. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, they won an uh, award for their community activism mm -hmm. from um, Def Jam. Mm -hmm. Nice. And um, I was honored to have been there to witness it. So you can check out my mini conversation I had with them. Soon we'll have them back on the show. They are friends of the show. Yeah. So we'll have to get with them and have them come update us on what's going on. Another thing, did you guys hear about this? Of course you did, because we talked about it in our group. Mike Brown's father, everybody remember who Mike Brown is? Oh, yeah. Mike Brown's father and protesters for, from Ferguson are demanding $20 million from Black Lives Matter. You guys lot, hear about that? a lot of money, oh, yeah. Mike Brown's father and Ferguson protesters are demanding $20 million from Black Lives Matter because they did not provide enough aid to local activist groups in Ferguson, Missouri, and other places around the country where racial justice protests occurred. Today we hold Black Lives Matter accountable, said Tori Russell in a video posted to Twitter. Russell is a self-described frontline organizer and freedom fighter from Ferguson, the place where protests erupted following the 2014 death of Michael Brown by the hands of police. What kind of movement are we building when we say Black Lives Matter, but freedom fighters and families are being left behind? Russell said in a video which appeared along, which he also appeared alongside Michael Brown's father. Where is our restitution? The activists continued. We are not begging for a handout. We are coming for what we deserve. So you can go on social media and, and find that. It's been everywhere, circulated a long, 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 long way. Um, Black Lives Matter, um, they reportedly earned $90 million. Yeah. I, I, I see both sides, but I don't really like that just for the simple fact that one is causing the is is this is like public division in our community. Two is kind of adding to the fire of Black Lives Matter being a, a terrorist group or you know the negative kind you know the negative image yeah. that is I because I mean just the, just what two weeks ago my little sister she was at work she had a mask on she had Black Lives Matter it was during Black History Month she had a mask on. And basically her job was like, you can't wear that. And basically he was saying like, she told her, what if I came in here? He said, I'm a Jew, what if I came in here? He was saying something, basically saying what, you know, he was like not, and that's what I'm, with this coming out, it's just like, I don't know, it's making Black Lives Matter look bad. I, 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 I don't know that I blame anyone in this scenario because I think like we were talking about those companies, right? Yeah. And we were saying, oh, you know, they're doing all this performative activism, like they'll post Black Lives Matter, but mm -hmm. they're still underhandedly contributing financially to mm -hmm. these bills that yeah. are being passed, right? Well, Joe Schmo Corporation, you know, in order to get ahead and to do that performative activism, they may contribute 
ten thousand dollars to Black Lives Matter just because they want to say we they know. contributed ten thousand dollars. Right. They didn't do any research. They don't. I just wanted to be on the record that X Y Z Corp. You know, so I'm not sure that whoever the uh, legal entity, because you got to think about this, right? Black Lives Matter is a rallying cry, right? I want you to know I'm here. I want you to hear me. I want you to respect me. I want you to. But Black Lives Matter is also a legal entity that's registered, you know, as a as a whatever. And that's what I want to piggyback off of. Yeah. And that's why I totally disagree with you, why I am holding blame. This is totally Black Lives Matter, the organization's fault. Did they know and, that all and, these people were going to feel all of a sudden the guilt and shame out, and start sending you, them millions it, of dollars? It goes way back before that. Even let, Let's take here in Atlanta. Any activist here in Atlanta who's been here any time and actually been on the ground knows the controversy with Black Lives Matter that happened right here in Atlanta where there were two groups of Black Lives Matter. There was Black Lives Matter And then there was Atlanta, that the guy that was scamming. Yeah, and then there was the scam version. The, ga- the scammer guy. And yeah. from the outside, you couldn't tell which was which. And that's personally why I never got involved with Black Lives Matter organization on a local level from an Atlanta perspective being an activist because, like, once again, stepping in, it's like, it's a lot going on here. It doesn't seem to be any control. And stuff like that isn't just in Atlanta. As I visit... No, it was like that in Houston, too. Yeah, it, as I visit different places, yeah. I start seeing splinter cells of Black Lives Matter grow up. And, and then Antifa would kind of creep yeah, in and exactly. be involved and show up. Yeah. And from a national organization, the you got to have some kind of organization. You got to have some kind of structure so things like this don't happen. Or you well, can they did because but, they issued official Black but, Lives Matter leadership. But once again, it was real loose. Like, and it wasn't held accountable. Like, they well, don't because right. where it was took this money? Off. It but took off was, as a but, slogan okay, more but, so than but I'm as saying, an entity. When this but, money but, started coming in, like, did they have, like, bam, this money, we're going to allocate this money towards this? Or yeah. they were just taking the money and just doing whatever? And I always tell people anytime your organization for the people, transparency has to be one of your top goals. And, and, and it's for a reason like this because. When you have that much money and you're saying that, you know what I'm saying, this is for the people, your actions have to reflect it. And so I'm not mad. And I, I'm friends with Tory on Facebook. I'm well aware of who he is. And, like, he's he, he's a very polarizing figure. And I'm, I'm pretty sure anytime you're in a certain lane, people are going to feel one way or another about you. But one thing I can say, he's been there in St. Louis and Ferguson, you know what I'm saying, from the very beginning on the ground. And I, I, I feel like that Mike Brown Sr. and that community is more than, they're, 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 they should feel how they feel in my um, opinion. Here, this is from the AP, the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation, which I guess is its legal mm-hmm. name. So keep that in mind, the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation is now building infrastructure to catch up to the speed of its funding plans. Like I said, mm-hmm. to use its endowment to become known for more than protests after black Americans die at the hands of police vig- vigilante. So they're trying to, like, you know, we were this grassroots organization. Now we are a million dollar company and now we gotta figure yeah. out what are we doing, right? Mm-hmm. Cause it happened really fast. You, yeah. I'm sure the majority of that money was, was donated after George Floyd. Mm-hmm. And, and it's even been, I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys have seen instances over the last few years where people think they're Donate to the oh, yeah, real yeah, Black yeah, Lives yeah, Matter, yeah, yeah, but yeah. it turns out. I mean, to you be could go on Cash. I mean, not Cash App, but you go fund me and and just put Black Lives Matter, and you don't know where to send your money to. Mm-hmm. Um, we want to uplift Black joy and liberation, not just Black death. We want to see Black communities thriving. So, okay, when they get their ninety million dollars, this is what they're gonna do, right? Not just surviving. So that's what the foundation shared with the AP. Um, this marks the first time in the in the movements nearly eight year history that Black Lives Matter leaders have revealed in detailed look of their finances. The foundation's coffers and influence grew immensely following May 2020, the death of George Floyd. Okay. Um, the growth also caused longstanding tension to boil over between some of the movement's grassroots organizers and national leaders, like you were saying. That's the perfect example of what happened here in Atlanta. The former went public last fall with grievances about financial transparency, decision making, and accountability. The foundation said it's committed to $21.7 million in grant funding to official and unofficial Black Lives Matter chapters, as well as 30 black-led local organizations. So there's a bunch of 
spinoffs from Black Lives Matter, 30 of them. It ended 2020 when a balance of more than $60 million after spending nearly a quarter of its assets on the grant funds and other charitable giving. In its report, Black Lives Matter Foundation and individual donations via its main fundraising platform averaged 30.76, more than 10% of the donations are reoccurring. The report does not state who gave the money in 2020. Elitists declined to name prominent donors, but I know one, I know two, the Carters. <laughs> Last year, the foundation's expenses were approximately 8.4 million. That includes staffing operations, administrative costs, along with activities such as civic engagement, rapid response, and crisis intervention. One of its focuses for 2021 will be economic justice, particularly as it relates to the ongoing socioeconomic impact of COVID-19 on black communities. The racial justice movement had a broad impact in philanthropic, philanthropic giving last year. According to upcoming report by Candid and the Center for Disaster Philanthropy, 35% of the 20.2 billion of US funding dollars from corporations founding, uh, this is just too much numbers, but basically they're getting it together. BLM co-founder Patrice Cullors told the AP that the foundation is focused on a need to reinvest into black communities. So they got a lot of money to reinvest in black communities. Got a lot of money. And that's what they just need to do that. Like, and like you say, right. <laughs> like Don say, just be transparent with the way that you are doing it too. Like. You know, is it broke? Like, the, is it a breakdown anywhere of where they money go? That was it. Uh -oh. They have uh, in twenty twenty the foundation spun off its of its network of chapters as a sister collective called BLM Grassroots. The chapter, along with other Black led local organizers, became eligible in July for financial resources through a twelve million dollar grant fund. So, say I want to start a group. Hey, y'all, we're gonna start a group. Black Lives Matter. Live Hip Hop Daily, and we're gonna give funding, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. So we tell the, them, and they send us money. So they're sending money to the local. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, I, I, personally it just don't sound effective to me. Like when you, like he just said, you can buy land. Like let's buy, ta you gotta buy tangible things. Like people need tangible things. Well that's what they're saying. <laughs> they're gonna donate to COVID relief, to the hardest hit, uh, black communities that were hit by COVID. According to the foundation uh, records shared with the AP. That's indirect though. That's that's not tech, like. Several chapters, including the cities of Washington, Philadelphia, Chicago, were notified last year that their eligibility to receive $500,000 each in funding in a multi-year agreement. Only one BLM group in Denver has signed the agreement and received its funds. Would it be, all right, let me ask you this. Would it be effective? Would it be, do you feel like this would be more effective? We're just going to take where Mike Brown was from Ferguson. Black Lives Matter decides to build a school, put a school in Ferguson that develops these kids. And I'm talking about stuff like that. Like, mm -hmm. instead of, oh, we just gonna give y'all the money, y'all do whatever with it. Right. Be more intentional. I feel like they should be more intentional with how they spend it. But it ain't my money to tell people how to spend yeah. it. This is just my opinion. But I'm with you, Dom. <laughs> I never really like, if you look at me and you see the some of the things I've done in the community, you would think that I was like down with Black Lives Matter, but yeah. I'm I'm just and, and that's why I tell people like I don't have anything against Black Lives Matter. Like I think it's an awesome idea. I think it's a you know what I'm saying awesome Absolutely. idea for organization. But I always tell people you also have to be careful what you align yourself with because it's a lot that comes with aligning yourself with certain things. And so like and, and I, I I I don't mind donating to Black Lives Matter. I actually have Absolutely, donated yeah. and different things yeah. like that, but. I just, you know what I'm saying? Once again, I have a different perspective on a local level here in Atlanta than I'm, and I'm not trying to affect anybody else's view. Because there's other groups that are yeah. doing, you know. You, so anyway, after George Floyd's killing, which we said, that sparked it, right? Mm -hmm. A surge of donations saw the foundation go from a small, scrappy movement to maturing institution. Last summer, leaders sought nonprofit status with the IRS. Mm -hmm. Hey, yeah. now we're talking. Big, yeah. Which has, it was granted in December. So it's a relatively new. Fairly new, yeah. yeah allowing the organization to receive tax-deductible donations directly. Mm -hmm. In the near future, that will also require the foundation to file a 990 form, mm -hmm. revealing details of its organizational structure, employee compensation, programming, and expenses. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. 
Yeah, once Black Lives Matter. Don't be out here doing that. I yeah. don't want to. I don't want to have to be defending y'all next and, and, year. And that's what I think. Because they're trying to. They've been trying to demonize Black Lives Matter since. Yeah, and, and, and I feel like this is just adding fuel to. to that fire. Like, and it's coming yeah. from us. And then they're gonna be like, see, other Black people feel the same way. And that's why I don't like it. Like, yeah. I don't like that it's publicly. They publicly going back and forth. But I mean, I guess this is the only way. But just for the simple fact that. We know as black people, we know that Black Lives Matter is not like no malicious group. Mm-hmm. But the other side, the people that's against it, they are they looking for any reason to justify what they're Do saying. Do you guys remember? Are you old movie. enough to remember those campaign ads that were floating around, like around last election cycle for the presidential election? And how you. they were like Black Lives Matter, mm-hmm. and it showed like all these angry people <laughs> with <Yeah>. like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They were like. Marching, burning up stuff, and I'm just like, wow. Mm-hmm. And Stacey Abrams, and like these are like evil people. Like the way they did that in Georgia. All the, and just like you, y'all was even saying with like with, with the entertainers, mm-hmm. like with Ice Cube particularly, like he going into the work of move, but they're using him mm-hmm. for their own benefit, for their yeah. own message. So all they got to do is use that George Floyd fam. I mean, not George Floyd. Uh, Mike, Brown. Mike Brown's family is against Black Lives Matter. Right. That's the it's only the thing easy. they can run with. Yeah. They can I run think with the that. thing like, is Black Lives Matter uses these faces and these situations to push their agenda. Their yeah. agenda, and the families are just like, "Hey, we're struggling over here. We're drowning in legal debt, mm-hmm. trying to fight these cases." And that's like your homeboy having. They should have a. The they should have a struggling. fund for that. I yeah. about to say, yeah, even that. That's tangible. All these families. Black Lives Matter takes care of all the court fees, lawyer fees. It's something simple like that. But it's like they're really supporting. It's something tangible that these families are getting from this movement because they're making money because off of the family, off of the, the trauma of these families. Mm-hmm. So why not? I mean, I, and I don't know that they're not, but obviously from this situation, they're not doing it. So. Um, we talk heavily about Georgia, obviously, because we live here. Um, but this is not the only state that they're voting, that they're trying to pass voter suppression legislation, y'all. Yeah, they're doing it in, in states all throughout the country. So, especially in the South. So don't don't um, don't think that it's just here in Georgia. I know we talk about Georgia, um, but there's bills that are being proposed. And any of y'all, if any of y'all watching from somewhere else, and y'all got crazy stuff going on in y'all area, send it in to us because we send love it to yeah, us. Love, love um, here's one um, I sent you guys. Kentucky proposes a bill that would make insulting or t- haunting cops a crime. I seen you post that earlier. Once again, police gonna be the police. <laughs> that, that that a lot of places are now making it legal for you to even record the police. So like all these live interactions that we see of police doing misconduct and things they shouldn't be doing, they're literally trying to make it to where you can't video them, you know, doing bad things. It's crazy. In Kentucky, uh, Senator David Carroll, who get what he's a retired cop david carroll was a retired cop he would make it a class b misdemeanor punishable by a fine of 250 dollars or up to 90 days in prison not or and up to 90 days in prison i'm sorry the term would include if someone accosts insults taunts or challenges a law enforcement officer with offensive or divisive words gestures or physical contact Allegedly. Yeah, technically. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm about to say, like, but 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 just think about, like, even they made all these laws against drugs and stuff like that. Like, people don't realize who sells the most drugs, but who's punished most for it. So, like, we know what goes on. So, it's just a matter of, you know, you, you, you know how things will be enforced. Some com- some communities are policed a lot differently than others, and we can keep it at that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Now you have a, a criminal record. Um, there are now 253 oh, yeah. bills in 43 states that aim to restrict voting access. That's a lot of bills. And watch people not go vote on it. <laughs> Georgia is fascinating because Republicans wrote every aspect of the state's voting law, so they were totally fine with it until it didn't work for them anymore. Mm-hmm. And that's why Georgia is at the top of the list for the voter suppression, and that's why people are outside the state capitol hollering and screaming, and that's why we keep saying black votes matter in Georgia. 
Every press relief from the Georgia Secretary of State brags about Georgia as the national leader in elections, but they still kept questioning it. They kept re re recounting it. So yeah, keep up with your stuff. And like Dom said, if you see anything or hear anything that you want us to know that we can talk about, please let us know. Um, what else did you guys want to talk about? Oh yeah, don't forget, I told you at the beginning of the show, but Derek Chauvin, the man who had his knee on George Floyd's neck, his trial starts this week. Um, and, uh, and let's make sure we call it the Derek Chauvin case, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times they, they, they label the victims as, you know, George Floyd isn't on trial, so, you know, let, let's keep that in mind that he is a victim and Derek Chauvin, it, the, the ex-police officer who murdered George Floyd is the one that's on trial. Are they doing it live? Um, I don't. I remember know. back in the, the court TV, they used to have court. Yeah. They used to have all the, oh, all court TV that. still is a thing. But I'm saying, do they do it live? They do. They still if do they live. If they do, I'll let y'all know. I'll post it on the page because okay. sometimes I'll like go live and just yeah. be sitting there watching TV. Like, do y'all see this? <laughs> um. So today, breaking news: Biden signed an executive order expanding voting access. So what Sunday's order directs the heads of all federal agencies to submit proposals for their respective agencies to promote voter registration and participation within 200 days. While assisting states in voter registration under the National Voter, Re voter Registration Act, in addition to orders and instructs General Service Administration to modernize the federal government's vote.org portal. Mm. Ahead of the signing, Biden spoke about the order during the virtual remarks at Martin and Coretta King Unity Breakfast, an annual event commemorate, commemorating Bloody Sunday. African American demonstrators demanded the right to vote, were brutally beaten by police while crossing the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma. And I had the honor of walking across the Edmund Pettus Bridge last year, um, the very last year that uh, John Lewis was there before he died. Mm -hmm. So I will take that to my grave as a proud moment because I had the choice of going to Mardi Gras that was last year around that was this week like yeah. a, like a year ago that to was the, the last thing i did that was the last place i went before lockdown mm. and it was That's crazy yeah the president also called on congress to restore parts of the voting rights act struck down by the supreme court in 2013 and advocate for voting rights so here we go local and federal governments are at odds about making it easier to vote or making yeah. it harder to vote so right. the biden passed the house passed sweeping election bill that would counter gop efforts to restrict voter access so this will be interesting hr1 is the name of it a landmark piece of legislation that urgently needed to protect the right to vote the integrity of our election and repair the strength of our democracy biden said so he's working the executive order also expands voter access and registration efforts for communities often overlooked in the outreach so they, you have 200 days to outreach to people to let them know, direct them to the voter.org page. So we should be seeing it. Y'all let us know. If you start seeing more stuff about voting come out, it's because of this. The president lacks the authority to overturn such provisions at the state level, acknowledges, <laughs> acknowledging laws like the recent pass in Georgia GOP controlled state house, limiting early vote. So there's gonna be a lot, a lot of pushback, but. Yeah. Hey. I'm glad to see the pushback though. Like we need their opposite in action to offset some of the greatest stuff that's going on or at least make it noticeable. So we'll see. Yeah. See. So um that was it. I didn't really have anything else to talk about. Um I know we were mentioning that the uh things are getting heated with T I and Tiny. Oh yeah, I feel like that's escalating every day. Um now there's thirty women accusing them of all sorts of shit from drugging them. So holding them hostage. As a woman, Kim, do you, how true do you think it is? Like on a scale of one to 10, how, how, how true do you think it is? Also, did you guys see that the- <laughs> um, I think saying whether it's true or not. True, like- <laughs> Well, I guess, I guess, do you, I guess the better question is, do you feel like a lot of people are crying wolf? <laughs> Taking advantage of the situation? Yeah. And, and I feel like there. I think that happens a lot. You do? Yeah. As a woman. And, and it, it's just interesting to hear the dynamic. But you know what? I'm old. Uh-huh. 
and ain't nobody trying to drug me and bring me nowhere so you know maybe that's my perspective but i was young mm -hmm. and i remember but my my perspective and my slogan and my motto is be proactive instead of being reactive mm -hmm. so when i say stuff like you might not want to go there with them or you might not want to wear that there or you might not want to do that around them or mm -hmm. you might not want to show them you know that could avoid a lot of misunderstanding. Yeah. I'm not saying that because, oh, so I got to dress like this because he's a he's rapey, or I got to dress like that because he's yeah, yeah. And, because and, why would you? Why are you poking your fork? Why and, are you poking the bear? And 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 this is just you know I, I feel like once again as a guy protecting me and Jay Black from this conversation, I feel like off real. From my perspective, I hear so many women say, I should be able to wear what I want to. I should be able to go where I want to go. I should be able to do what I you want to do without. You absolutely should. But without, that's not the world we live and, in, and, 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 and that's where I'm getting at, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, for survival, like, that, that's kind of like, it, 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 that's kind of like me cutting myself in, in the water and I know it's sharks there. Like, you know what I'm saying? Sharks like blood. If I get in the water anyway, I could get eaten. But I, I don't want to get that shark any more of an incentive to come at me. But I, I feel like we're in such a dynamic time when it comes to liberation. And I've said this on other podcasts, women's rights. Um, and so it's good to hear these conversations going on. So what is it? And y'all put a lot of, uh, you know, men catch a lot of slack, but slack, slack. Slack, slack. All the um, what if you're a woman that's attracted to women? And you, and, you could be an aggressive and, woman and, 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 that's attracted and to women. And this is something I've already said. You could and, be and, a woman that's really aggressive, and, and you could be and this just as inappropriate. But you don't hear that them conversations. You don't hear women being accused of sexual harassment. Shit, I've been harassed by a woman before. But you don't. If, but if you, you could don't hear them cases to, though. If you could talk to most young men, they'll tell you. I guarantee you, if you talk to ten guys, most of them would tell you that their encounters as a young men often came first with a much older woman. Their father shouldn't have been you know really women are rapey like like what? women are legit rapey but it's not looked at in the same way in our society so they get away with it. How, how many times have you seen a, a male teacher have inappropriate relations with her but, and, but, but what too. happens women too men go to jail like women like women i've go seen to jail women too. i've seen women get 90 days for literally molesting you know what i'm saying a, a young man and you know they may lose their job but they're not in jail for the next 20 years because like once again nobody takes it seriously when a young man is and to what we talked about on the phone like being offended is subjective to the person like you feel me because yeah, yeah, yeah. i can be looking at you out of eye having a conversation and i can offend you and now you offended by that and it's just like I, this is how I, you feel me and it's just like man these people are coming up and they might have been they felt like they was sexually assaulted but i think it was even with with from the with Cuomo, like from that situation, what, what I heard, I didn't read into it, but from what I heard, it sounded like he was just flirting with the girl. Well, mm -hmm. and, and she took offense to that, too. so it's just right. like, it's a thin line. I A lot of guys are creeps. I talk about this all the time. Some of your homeboys are creeps, and you yeah. don't know it, and you wouldn't know it. I, I'll tell, as human beings, everybody got a certain percentage of creep in them. But some people just take it to the to the <laughs> the next level, and it, it's like super creepy, like you know what I'm saying. So, like just putting things into perspective, it's kind of like like Jay Black said, like so much stuff is subjective, like, and that's why I don't. I always tell people like women, I don't compliment nobody outside of my household. And women go like, my, my woman is beautiful, my sister is beautiful, my niece is beautiful, my mom's beautiful. Outside of it, hey. Hi, have a good day, but ain't no ain't gonna be no extra, you know what I'm saying? Because the times that we do live, do you feel you could like say that? you could say hi to a woman, and she'll feel like you trying to talk to her. I got a boyfriend. Her response, I got a boyfriend. I'm just saying hi. You feel me? Like it's you know it's just like man. And he's light skin. <laughs> I'm just saying, but that's how women. That's what I'm saying. None of that matter. Like yeah, it don't none matter. None of that matter. Days, like man. like Jay Black said, you gotta be. I mean, hunting. I'm I don't know. It's it's I'm from the '90s. It's hard to offend me. That's a long time ago. For you some people, the young, the young folks don't, you know, the nineties was a long time ago to them. We live in a participation lead. Like, I mean, we live in a uh, participation trophy generation. Mm -hmm. So yeah. everybody has to feel like they're, you, yeah, like we live in that type of, so it's just like, everybody's entitled. I wish T.I. and Tiny the best. I really, really do. Um, I hope that none of this stuff is true. They trying to send these people to jail, y'all. The, they're not playing. Like, the did, charges that they're facing. Did you see what the lawyer said? Because the, the, one of the lawyers for representation of 
some of these young ladies said that T.I. and Tiny basically tried to pay them off and they was like, we not after money. We here for literally life. I saw that, but then I, I did read further into that yeah. and he wasn't, I think T.I. actually called the, mm-hmm. it was saying like, what do we need to do? Like, what's going yeah. on? Like, in a sense, like yeah. trying yeah, to like, figure out. Yeah, like, why are you like, doing this? Yeah. Is it money? Like, okay, I'll give you money. Yeah, yeah. like, because yeah. I don't just, feel like he tried to like pay he, his he way He's just out trying to it. get this shit out. Like, yeah. he don't want to deal with this shit. Like, and, and I don't blame him. I, hell, I'd be trying to do that too. Cause, because like, now he's, he's they, they, they stopped recording The Family Hustle, mm-hmm. the movie that he was going to be in. Ant-Man. Yeah. Ant-Man, yeah, he lost his Marvel. He lost his, he was a Marvel. He lost all that. Yeah, The Family Hustle was like, no pun intended. It's on hold right now because like they got so much stuff going on. And that's a that's not just for them. They are they're an economy. They they they, they are an economy. They feed so many people and give so many people jobs and you know and different things like that. So like you know it, it's definitely wild times. You know I'm definitely interested to see how this is all gonna pan out. Um. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Y'all be <laughs> safe in Atlanta. Everybody that was out here at these parties this weekend. Go get tested for COVID, please. I'm like Keisha Lance Bottoms when y'all was protesting in the summer. Go home. (laughs) Go home. And I don't even know what y'all doing. They what are y'all doing? They're part. You have to realize. No, I see videos of the party. I think you just, and I had to check myself like, we live here. This shit been open. Right. Like it's people that's oh, been yeah. from different yeah. cities. Like they Ohio, been they've been open. closed. Yeah. Like yeah. they just got off a 10 p.m. curfew like a month ago. Wow. So we've been yeah. open since June 1st. People, and you know, people used to travel and like this is a, a release to people. Mm-hmm. This but, is well, a okay. release. Okay, that's great. Okay. <laughs> but what are you doing? They're partying. partying. Like even on the drive I'm over here. I'm seeing like, videos of the party. Yeah. They not partying. No, I mean, and we had that conversation. Like nowadays, in general, they don't party. They so just you go to the club to see a bunch of dudes having a great time. The dudes are having a great time. Whoever the uh, uh, whoever that's on the flyer gonna be here, they're having a great time. They uh, uh, dancing, they rapping. Uh, I'm sorry, you from the '90s, so everybody wow. else is like this. That's it. Wall that's wall all the club flower. is, though. This is that's this, all the club is. This is the new millennial version of just being a wallflower. Like, how the nineties you had some cash down the wall, not dancing. Like, no, you know what I'm saying? nobody is dancing. Nobody. But that's it's what all I'm sections. Saying. Like, this the new version. Like, you are, it's, it's these more are, so about being and, at and the you spot. know what? I have a problem with it because I feel like after the age of say like 30, mm-hmm. 35, yeah, you should be over shit like that. Like you went to the I'm club, now. you got drunk, you had a great time, you had great music, you met some beautiful women, you you know what I mean? You did all that. Now, you should be at the age where you like, I don't want to go do this. You are a grown ass <laughs> man videotaping another grown ass <laughs> man. That's what you having fun for. That's what but, you're risking your life for. But I feel like you know what I'm saying. Once again, looking at it from another perspective, it's kind of like. You know, you have to realize that, and this is something I had to learn when I got into the entertainment industry. Because, like, once again, on the outside, when you're looking at it, it all looks fabulous. And then you get on the the sets and the money's fake, and you know what I'm saying, yeah. you know, things like that. So, once again, there's a market for that. And like, I used to feel bad about selling that to people because I knew it wasn't real. But that's what people want. So if that's what they, they want to live the lie, you know what I'm saying? They want to live the lie. It's a perception world. Like, yeah, and that's why I was telling you, like, before we got here, I was telling you about the Biggie documentary and all that. Did I'm you like, watch man, it? I didn't watch it yet, but I'm just tired of watching hip hop. I'm tired of all hip hop stuff from being around this stuff and really seeing what mm-hmm. I'm tired I'm of tired all hip hop docs. Like I'm kind of just burnt out from it for the most part. Like I'm trying to find different things. Like, you so know. you have the couple of documentaries that you should watch and I told you about them, but to me, I'm over it too. I'm more into history now. Mm-hmm. Political history, racial history. You know, why yeah. are we here now? Why is this going on? And that's what mm-hmm. we try to talk about on this show. What happened back then that's making this go on now? Because guess what? That's going to affect your money. It's going to affect your job. It's going to affect your family. It's going to affect your health. Right. They have politicized a pandemic. They are gambling with your life. The reason why you could go to the club and do this right here is because Brian Kemp is a Republican. <laughs> And he wants the numbers to be fucked up because if they're not, guess what they're going to say? Huh, we told you Trump was great and he did a great job. No, he didn't. Yeah. So that's all I'm saying. So make sure you keep up with us <laughs> in our show because we keep you up on shit like that. I'm going to connect the dots for you, baby. It's not just We're going to connect the dots. <laughs> so, y'all, have a good week. 
pray for us down here in Georgia because now we have to deal with the aftermath of club COVID. And all y'all taking this COVID. No, nah, they taking it back home. The, the people that live here wasn't, wasn't in the mix. Yeah, they was there. They were there. <laughs> I'm trying to get a minute for this. They were there. Nah, I saw we, some familiar faces. We good upstanding crowd. people in Atlanta. Uh, we stand behind our mayor, Keisha. <laughs> <laughs> we went outside. Y'all wasn't listening to Keisha. So make sure y'all check us out, CTD underscore ATL and on Instagram. Also, interjection. Yeah. I'm sorry. But no. also, happy Women's Month. Shout out to Kim yeah, and, Month. you know what I'm saying, all the... You know, beautiful black women that's out here making history every day. Uh, and I know it's a women's history month, but, you know, I like black women. I'm black, so I want to give y'all an extra little shout for everything Thank y'all you. doing out here in the well, world. Thank you. So. You know what? When I was young, I learned how to curtsy. And I've not <laughs> had to do that one other day in my life. But today, uh-huh. I'm going to curtsy. Thank you very much, guys. Happy yeah. Women's History Month, ladies. Indeed. So we're gonna honor a woman next week. Let's honor a woman. Next next time we record, we're gonna honor a woman. This week we gonna honor Kim. We hey. gonna honor. We gonna start it off with honoring you. Hey, put a cash app up on the screen. You Talk know what I'm saying? We like cash app. She's the cash, cash app, app queen. Kimmy. She like cash app. I don't like cash app. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't man. like cash app. Well, Make all the cash money that they send you on cash app, send to me, and I'll take care of it. We gonna talk about that one day. We never <laughs> talked about it. Um, yeah, so I went out for the first time before we wrap it up. I did go out. I went out yesterday. Okay. I wore heels for the first time in 12 months. Oh, wow. She had them drumsticks out. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think she I had could them still drumsticks heels, out. So I'm very, very proud of myself. The glaze. Thought- <laughs> she had some glaze on the things. <laughs> so hey. about the glaze on my legs. There was a woman in the place that had Vaseline. Oh, man. And it was kind of chilly yesterday, and I had a little ash on my mm. leg, so I had to use her stuff. Look at him. And then my leg got all shiny. So women I out like here taking care of women. That's what I'm talking about, the sisterhood. <laughs> <laughs> Kim was out there. She Look, before she went out yesterday, she took a bath. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, she had the clothes laid across the bed. Yeah, she took a bath. <laughs> I'm a killer a today. Shower. I'm a killer today. Nah, you took a bath. A morning bath. <laughs> they be killing me, y'all. But we'll see you next week. Make sure you pick up your Soul Mississippi candle, too, because mine's burnt to the bottom. Hint, hint. Mine is burnt to the bottom. That's good stuff. That's what we it's want. It's really good. I ain't going to lie. This one's my favorite, I think. Which one is that? The sugar cookie. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, mine's burnt to the bottom, so I might have to steal one of these. Make sure you check out So Mississippi Candle, especially if you know somebody from Mississippi. Or Louisiana. Because they be going through some shit, y'all. Y'all need to buy them. <laughs> send them. If you know somebody that lives in Mississippi, buy them this candle, y'all, and send them some love. They, they, they hey, would like that. I think accepting, they would like that. We accepting our love in Mississippi, so. Send yeah, them, them this and, and maybe a bottle of water. <laughs> we will see you guys next week. Make sure you follow us again. Um, Innovative Black Station, we're on there. YouTube, we're on there. Make sure you check us out on Instagram, CTD underscore ATL. Um, and then you can find the rest of us from there if you really want to look. And uh, like I said, send us some information if you want us to dig deeper into something locally in your area. And we will see you next week. Peace.